at Stanford studying symbolic systems. Hello there, my name is Andy. I'm a sophomore at Stanford thinking about studying symbolic systems. I'm from Los Altos. I'm originally from Arlington, Texas. And one fun fact about me is that I really enjoy doing wildlife photography. When I was two and a half years old, I could memorize and recite like 30 ancient Chinese poems. Now I can memorize and recite zero. Our first assumption about Stanford students is that they usually have super quirky essays and extracurriculars to stand out. One of the coolest things about the Stanford Common App is, even though there's a lot more essays than a lot of other schools, um, they're often shorter. And so you really get to do like this quick dive into different aspects of your life. Interesting. Stanford essays are actually the one that I had the most fun writing because it's very personal, especially the roommate essay. You can like truly be yourself and show your own character through it rather than being superficial with some of the other essays where you're just like describing your extracurriculars and whatnot. You definitely don't need to be quirky, especially if it doesn't come naturally to you. I will say that I've met some of the most interesting people at Stanford. Don't be afraid to entertain the admissions reader if you think that you can answer a question to the best of your abilities, make it funny, and make it still be yourself, then like definitely have fun with your application. True themselves, I think it's the highlight of all these essays. But I think what's important is that you show um, a sort of certain commitment or, or slash maybe mastery towards at least one field of extracurriculars. It shows that you're dedicated and you're passionate towards at least some subject. Our next assumption is that Stanford students are smart. I think smart is just, in general, not a great word because it implies that it's something that you can't really change. And for students, or just in general, like when you're going in college, you want to be able to think about issues from multiple different perspectives, um, from perspectives that usually you're not used to thinking from, and to be really excited about that prospect. I think that being hardworking and thoughtful, those are more precise words that people can work towards than smart, and also they describe the Stanford population better too. I will say that a lot of Stanford students I know are usually very driven, hardworking. That doesn't mean to say that they succeed at everything they put their mind to. Failure is something that everyone experiences. And honestly, um, a lot of the classes at Stanford are very difficult. What's great about Stanford is that there is an amazing community of people who work together. And usually it's when Stanford students put their mind together that they're really able to solve problems and find um, creative answers. Our next assumption is scared of accidentally signing up to another Stanford prison experiment. Our psychology department is pretty cool and gotten a lot more ethical over time. And yeah, I'm thinking psychology class now is pretty great. In some ways yes, in some ways no. Depends on who we're comparing to, I guess. If you're just comparing America in general, based on purely racial percentages, I mean, Stanford has like 20% Asian. I think Asian American population in America is much lower than that. Similarly, like with African Americans, Latino Americans, but the majority is still white American. The largest proportion of students at Stanford are white students. If you're comparing it to like peer Ivy League schools, I think the percentages are about similar. If you're comparing it to some schools like the UC system, for example, there's gonna be a lot more a lot more racial diversity. I came to Stanford from the Bay Area. I will say that my school was very diverse in that it was like 70% Asian. You know, wonderful students, but definitely not the bastion of racial diversity. So when I went to Stanford, I will definitely say that it isn't just racial diversity, but it's just like diversity of life experiences, knowledge, and personalities. There really is a lot of different types of wonderful people. I will say that Stanford has a medical school on campus and hospital. There's a lot of people in pre-med um, or majoring in human biology, and there's a very tight-knit community there. Even though that's the case though, not everyone goes to med school, um, and there's a lot of people studying all sorts of cool things on campus. It's definitely not true that everyone who has come to Stanford has already achieved huge success. If this is the case, I'm super behind. Um, no, uh, what people who have come to Stanford have shown is everybody has done things that show a lot of promise and a lot of heart. Everyone is on their own journey. Um, I guess as corny as that sounds, um, people are at different stages in their lives even though they're all in this college together. And I think what Stanford does really good is that no matter where you are in your journey, um, Stanford will push you to go even further. No one really comes here with their life already figured out. You don't need to have necessarily cured cancer, but if you've done something in your school 
or new community that you put a lot of thought into, um, that you did your best, then that's definitely enough. A majority of our students are STEM students, I believe. Um, computer science is our most popular major. About 20% of undergraduates choose to do some sort of CS. A lot of our STEM departments outfund the humanities department. Even though that's the case, that's not to say that the humanities is not existent at Stanford. That's not at all true. Stanford really does have a world-class humanities department. For example, I think the creative writing department is one of the top in the country. I did a program my freshman year called Structural Liberal Education, or SLEEP. This is a program where you room with other freshman students your entire freshman year and take um, eight units of philosophy, history, literature courses, and I had a lot of fun in that program. Another cool thing about Stanford is that they're trying to find cool ways to bridge them in the humanities. Stanford has what's called the Center for Textual and Spatial Analysis, which is really focused on this digital humanities work and trying to find new computational methods to push the humanities field, and I think that's really cool. I mean, it's totally true that Stanford students are hot. Have you seen me? Okay. Our next assumption is hot. Um, I'm assuming that means that Stanford's campus is hot. It actually gets really colder at night sometimes. It's, 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 it's kind of, yeah, it gets cold. Gosh, uh, I mean, definitely no. Um, if that's the case, I'm not invited to any of these parties. While Stanford isn't really like, say like Caltech where no one parties. There are definitely more parties at Stanford from what I've heard than compared to some of the pure Ivy Leagues. Just because Stanford has like an entire row of like frat houses and you still gotta study, you know, like academics are rigorous. But I think it depends on just who you hang out with, but I wouldn't characterize most people as partying all the time. Let's be honest here, who doesn't love trees? Who can live without trees? <laughs> Personally, I don't know, like, trees are our unofficial mascot, right, as they say. And Stanford has a lot of trees, and they, do, they definitely like, pretty up the campus a lot. Palm trees are definitely an iconic part of Stanford's campus. Our unofficial mascot for the band is a tree. Whoever is playing the role of the tree that year actually gets to design the tree costume. So there's been all sorts of different wacky designs, and they're all very, very um, amazing. I don't really know, how, like, if I love a tree to death, like, you know, that type of love, but I appreciate trees. <laughs>